Live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering HPE Discover 2017, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for The Cube's coverage of HPE Discover 2017. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. My co-host Dave Vellante with SiliconANGLE, Wiki Bond. Our next guest is Xavier Poisson, VP in Indirect Digital Services at HPE, and Craig McClellan, founder of ThinkOn. Guys, welcome to theCUBE, welcome back. I know Dave interviewed you in London, I wasn't there, but welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So uh, Xavier, I got to congratulate you on the uh, prestigious Cloud Leadership Award in 2017. Oh, so my. congratulations on Thank the uh, Data Cloud Europe prestigious award. Yeah, yeah, it was announced yesterday in Monte Carlo. And uh, I believe it is a, a good recognition from the industry about what we have been doing, but not only me, you know, as a, as a collective work with our partners with uh, the HP people, and uh, really uh, to, to bring the best of the value of cloud to, to our customers. So Monte Cla Carlo, Vegas, okay, well, okay tough in. choices. I'd like to go to Monte Carlo, it's not <laughs> a bad place to visit, hang out. Cloud 28 is really expanding, really kind of lightning in a bottle with yeah. what you've been doing, so this speaks to the general uh, uh, industry trend, the wave that you're riding with cloud and enterprise. Talk about why Cloud 28 is doing so well, and what's the dynamic, what's the driver? Well, you know, uh, at Red Pack Enterprise, we believe that the customers deserve to know more, that they need to have the choice, and also that our partners are playing a significant role to make it happen, because we cannot believe that one single company uh, will do everything. So the, the digital transformation of our customers is involving that more and more capabilities are put in place in order that we answer the right needs at the right moment in the right geography. And this was, you know, the, the foundation of Cloud 28 Plus to make it happen like that. We call it, you know, the, the, how you can make uh, a global ecosystem in the sense of the sharing economy, putting the resources together in order really that one single uh, partner can find with another one the way to achieve his goal instead of thinking, I will do it myself and I will lose my customer at the end of the day. And believe me or not, but the customers recognize that. So this is the reason why I believe it's growing. It's and, growing fast. And the open source community is, is really expanding as well. And if you look at the technology providers from the global system integrators down to the front lines of channel partners, cloud is changing the game, customers expect coexistence. Craig, you're in the middle of all this. What are some of the frontline dynamics with customers? Because they're going to be getting a lot of services from a variety of different vendors and suppliers. No one size fits all anymore. Uh, that is so true, more than ever. Uh, I think it uh, falls into three categories. One is all of the customers expect partners and their service providers to focus on integration with others, treat each other as peers. Uh, whether you call it uh, collaboration or cooperation, it's still an issue that uh, the, the customer more than ever is expecting their providers to facilitate. Uh, secondly, they're very impatient. Uh, everything is about now or five minutes ago, and there's very low tolerance for the traditional engagement model. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and the third item is technology is changing so fast, the customers of uh, in many cases have stopped uh, trying to stay on top of it, and they're now looking for the service providers to be the effectively their proxy with the underlying developers. The patient thing is a good point. I want to drill into that because what we're seeing is a move to cloud highlights the anti-waterfall concept, which was really great for project management back in the days of ERPs and those 18 month to 24 months POCs. Now, you know, people are under a lot of pressure to drive top line revenue and cost consolidation with, so cloud can give you that. So how has that changed the nature of the, of the customer? I mean, obviously they're impatient, but how has that changed structurally how they engage with partners? So, what I experience in, in our day to day is the, the customers are eager to fail fast. It's a failure is an acceptable outcome, as long as it doesn't take them 12 months to 18 months. They're also expecting service providers to embrace a, a similar de DevOps mentality, where they're looking for service providers to be innovating all the time. So there's a, there is some forgiveness, I think, that's, that occurs mm -hmm. from the customer base if, they, if we're all in this together, but they, they really, you know, back to what I said earlier, they just do not tolerate, uh, you know, we'll meet next Thursday and talk about it. They, they really want to move to the action. They want the action. action. So Craig, talk a little bit more about Think On, sort of why you founded the company. What's your journey been like? I'm really interested in the transformation that has been affected as a result of Cloud 28. Uh, well, so we believe very strongly in ecosystems, participating in ecosystems. 
we're a wholesale provider, so we enable the traditional VARs to go to market faster. And we looked at uh, the Cloud28 marketplace as just another example of an ecosystem where traction inside the ecosystem is growing faster than if we were to do everything ourselves. So not only do we embrace the notion of partnerships, but we also leverage the channel to help them develop faster go-to-market strategies in their, in their chosen niches. So how did it work? I mean, how did you guys engage? Is there, is there, do you find partners like this? Did they come to you? They're already part so of the ecosystem? I believe it's, it's, both, uh, it's both sides. Uh, sometimes, yes, we discuss. I believe HP has a responsibility to discuss with our partners to explain that the world is changing and that there is an opportunity. So we do our job. And uh, creating a relationship with, uh, with Craig uh, has been done by the, the HP team uh, in, uh, in the country. And uh, diversity matters. We need to respect also what is happening into the country, the ecosystem and the way business is done in, into the country. So in this case, so it was HP. Some other cases, and I have a very good example, it was in New York. Uh, the account manager of a VAR was called by the VAR to say to, to, I want to join. How I can get in touch with Cloud28 Plus? Because I see the opportunity to partner with some other vendors, meaning ISVs or SIs, and I want to be there. So it is both sides. Uh, we have a lot of calls from ISVs because the software vendors, developing mm -hmm. applications, uh, and as you said, Craig, it's going very, very fast with uh, cloud native development. So you have more and more startups coming and developing new products, and they want to reach the market very, very quickly. And with the exposure that we have, because we are worldwide, and uh, we started in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, but we are developing Cloud28 Plus now from December onwards in uh, the United States of America, in Canada, Latin America, in Asia Pacific. You would be amazed what is happening in India, for instance, uh, where cloud is just popping up, and where all the good ideas are coming. So it is both sides, either from HP engaging with their partner and say, okay, there is an opportunity, do you want to join? Or sometimes, as I said, it is the partners reaching on us saying, we want to be there. We want to accelerate with you. Now, give us some metrics on the program. So, uh, as of today, uh, so remember, we opened the platform, it was in December 15. And we are together in yes, London, right. if you remember. Yeah, absolutely. As of today, it's 18 months after, 500 members. It's amazing, 500 members. We cover more than 300 data centers of our partners, like the ones of Craig. 300. And we have uh, published nearly 18,000 cloud services on the platform out of 2,000 unique. And we have nearly now 40,000 hits per month on the website. It's really amazing. I can tell you it's a snowball effect. And um, it's not only the end user customers, but uh, we have a lot, a lot of traffic inside the platform. Between members, we are building new offerings. So for instance, we have been speaking here at Discover of the Ormuco offering that has been uh, announced uh, running on Discover. This is coming out of Cloud28 Plus, typically, and we see that here. Uh, there is another offering that uh, HP Point Next is proposing now as a service, which is a Lego identity by Lequa which is a software company in the Nordics, coming out of Cloud28 Plus. So, uh, expanding dramatically well. So this really highlights the pay-as-you-go cloud business model, yeah. and it gives ISVs and VARs and VABs the portfolio approach. Yeah. Kind of that, so they're kind of organically putting this together versus the old channel model of predefined programs and products being shipped out to partners. You can pop services in here, and then your customers can roll their own solutions. That's right. Is that, is that, am I getting that right? Absolutely. I also think that one of the things that is a real value add is a lot of organizations are concerned about vendor lock-in. Yeah. And when you build a consortium, like what the HPE has done, it forces the service providers to uh, participate in a way that avoids lock-in. Every service provider wants to build a lock-in strategy, but there's subtle ways that you can do it that aren't offensive, and then there are offensive ways. Yeah. And I think the Cloud28, consortium is really doing a good job and giving customers the comfort that they can adopt services, but they're not locked in. Let's call it sticky. What's the best go. way for somebody in the channel to create stickiness and loyalty with their customers? In my experience, they have an existing ecosystem that they've been working with for a long time, whether it's HPE or Veeam or another software vendor, and 
that's an ecosystem that their sales organization understands. It's an ecosystem that their, their own support organization understands. I think you should always start a, a nice simple step within an ecosystem you already know, and then take the next step, turn it into a recurring revenue stream without trying to start from scratch. Blank slate is always exciting to the, to the people that are paid to do it, but unfortunately the outcome is n usually not on time and on budget but there's lots of little steps you can take with, with existing ecosystem partners. Kind of familiarity, you know, ease of doing business, yep. you know, track record, all those kinds of Customer things. Customer trust. Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, you know, we use the term lock-in, but that's sort of, that's really what we're trying to achieve is trust and loyalty. Yep. Yeah, so. The new lock-in is scale, openness, and trust. Uh, question on the, some of the technical things. I mean, channels have always been a beautiful thing in direct to sales is a great cost per order dollars. The numbers are great, but you got to get it going, right? So you got some the flywheel rolling with Cloud 28. How do you nurture this? I mean, obviously it's organic. There's some community involved, training and getting out there. I mean, how is it running? I mean, I'm just trying to understand. This is a really good formula. Is there a magical formula? Is there certain training? Is it done in the community peer to peer? So it is amazing because it is, uh, it is driven by uh, listening to the people and I would say educating everybody in the value chain and the salespeople at HPE, the pre-sales at HPE and the people within our partners and the end user customer that they need to think business outcome. And once you shift from transactional selling to thinking business outcome, all the things are getting together because you think what your customer and your customer's customer wants to do on how you will help your customer to achieve his business goals. And you spoke about agility, time to market. Yeah. These are things you can create with assembling all, the, all what is in to Cloud 28 Plus. I have a big example of, we use our Cloud 28 Plus to answer very large multi-million dollar RFPs. Why? Because multi-cloud is a reality. So large governments, enterprises, wants to deploy clouds in many areas, not always putting everything in the same, uh, in the same data center. They want also that you have a good mix of technologies, a good mix of usage, and then you, you end with the RFPs, which are giant. Yeah. And especially when everything is coming to IoT, to the sprawling of, data, of yeah. data, you need to have data analytics, high performance computing. It is becoming a nightmare. So, we had a very good example with a, a big RFP in Europe. It was all about collecting all the open data that are produced by the satellites in the sky and to put all this data available for all the SMBs in Europe. I can, I can tell you it was very complicated to do. You will not believe me. In less than three weeks, we were able to discuss with the right partners inside Cloud 28 Plus to bid the consortium and to bid. Three weeks. Yeah. But been able. Well, the thing about uh, yeah. cloud too, as you get into these <laughs> scalable, horizontally scalable data exactly. opportunities, you also need specialism, you need to have expertise, and that to me really is an application specific, not peddling you know, product, you actually, to your outcome perspective, yeah. you're solution providing, right? It's based back yeah. to listening. So, okay, final thoughts. Guys, HP Discover 2017, what's the takeaway, Craig? So this year, what's the big story? Obviously we heard Meg Whitman, you know, compute is, is kind of being redefined uh, and scaling. What's the big story here from your perspective? Well, for me, I, I was excited to hear about the, uh, the, the customer having a more open mind about where to put workload. I would say two years ago, there was this mad rush to the cloud without really understanding the, the cloud. And now there's a, a more seasoned the reality is that workload has a multitude of locations where it can where it can be, and I've been saying this for a long time. But as a small organization in Canada, <laughs> not everyone's listening. Yeah, well, you're nimble. Uh, you're in the front line. That's right. <laughs> so it, it's nice to hear that it's being seen ar around the world in, in the enterprise space. Yeah. That's my big takeaway. Do you have thoughts? I believe that uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise is interest and confidence about the journey we have designed with Meg Whitman. Uh, we, we had to cross different phases of transformation and it is not finished. But more than ever, we put the customer in front of the discussion. You know, when you have been perhaps listening about this new stack that was pre-announced there, I was thrilled with the process this product has been uh, built just because it was by essence connected when they were designing the product to Cloud Plus that would be a resource provider 
for the new stack. This is the way we invent product now. So we put the customer and the channel partners and the ecosystems in the center of the design of the products that we are doing. So it's no more a product on selling, it is a product that is ready to be yeah. sold by, because it is fitting customer or channel partner outcomes. This is a big transformation of today's packaging. I would just say one of my, my observations is, again, education on the cloud is key. Uh, and then, you know, this ability of the tailoring solutions, not yeah. a one size fits all. You know, here's hyper-converged or here's composability. Exactly. Having the customer mix and match whatever they need. Guys, great conversation here inside the Cube. HP Discover, HPE Discover 2017 is the Cube. I'm John Furrier with David Lodge. We'll be back with more live coverage. Stay with us after this short break. <laughs>